accordingly we, the members of the National Council, representing the Jewish people in Palestine and the Zionist movement of the world, met together in solemn assembly today, the day of the termination of the British mandate for Palestine. By virtue of the natural and historic right of the Jewish people and of the resolution of the United Nations, hereby proclaim the establishment of the Jewish state in Palestine to be called Israel. When Israel declared its independence as a Jewish state on the 14th of May 1948, then the Arab world began to react. They were in uproar. The Bible warns of global intensification of anti-Semitism and hatred towards Israel because Jews and Israel are central to God's divine end-time purposes. Fulfilled Bible prophecies concerning Israel, Jerusalem, and the Jew provide irrefutable proof of God's existence and that the Bible is true. The Christian Zionist believes the promises of God will be fulfilled and so many of those promises we read in the, in the prophets of the Old Testament speak of how the Lord will regather his people back to the land. He will put a new spirit within them. He will give them a new heart. He will enable them to obey his laws and he will set his sanctuary, put his very presence in the midst of his people once again. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all the prophets speak of these things. But a Christian Palestinianist says, no, 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 no. The Jews rejected Jesus. The Jews crucified their Messiah. Therefore, God has rejected the Jews and replaced them with the church. And the church is the new Israel, the true Israel, the spiritual Israel. Now all those promised blessings that we read about throughout the prophetic scriptures apply to the church. This anti-Israel crusade believes that the nation of Israel is finished. But the Lord says, the only way Israel can cease to be a nation before me is if you stop the sun from shining and the moon and the stars from coming out. If you can measure the heavens and the depths of the oceans. We can't do that. That is the whole point. Israel cannot cease, no matter what she has done. While an estimated tens of millions of individual Christians around the world love and support the existence of the Jewish state, many of the mainline churches have been actively boycotting Israel, encouraging pro-Palestinian activism, demanding that Western governments stop sending aid to Jerusalem and seeking to eliminate Christian support for Israel and transfer it to Palestinian nationals. And that false doctrine is rooted in Augustine, it is rooted in the teachings of John Calvin and the Protestant reformers, it's in the very foundations of the Roman Catholic Church. So we've got evangelicals and Roman Catholics joining forces to say Israel has been replaced. And not only the Roman Catholic Church and the evangelical church forming an alliance, but bringing in the Islamic world. This is an unholy alliance. Replacement theology is the common thread. This erroneous teaching, synonymous with the spirit of anti-Semitism, entwining the church into belief that it is the new Israel, can, like a chameleon, become all things to all political and religious groups, taking on an eclectic assortment of ideas from various world religions allowing so-called Christian leaders to align themselves with high-ranking Muslim representation who are hostile towards Jews and their existence in the Middle East. No true Christian could be anti-Semitic. Jesus was a Jew. Satan is the inspirer of 3,000 years of anti-Semitism. If the Jews were destroyed, Messiah could not be born, even after Christ came. If Satan could destroy the Jews, Yahweh would be a liar, unable to fulfill his promises to restore Israel to its land, for Christ to reign over them on David's throne at his second coming. God's integrity is linked to the survival of Israel. <laughs>